Joining us now, member of the Foreign Relations Committee, Democratic Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut. Great to have you on, Senator. Uh, first, on Attorney General William Barr, did the Attorney General lie to members of the Senate and Congress uh, and to the American people about what he knew and when he knew it? Well, this is a, a big day, and there's no doubt that the attorney general has done more to um, compromise America's faith in the attorney general's office than any other attorney general in my lifetime. Uh, clearly, uh, the special investigator has a belief that he misled Congress, and he's going to have to answer some tough questions today. Um, he has become a political actor. Uh, he has compromised the independence of the attorney general's office, and it frankly makes me much more worried uh, about the decision he made but, but on Senator, what to redact did, from did, did he lie, though? Senator, I mean, though, I mean, he told Charlie Crist in the House of Representatives that he had no information as to whether the special counsel or anybody on the staff uh, were, were not pleased at his incomplete airing of what they had uncovered. Did he <laughs> not deliberately lie to the House of Representatives and then to Chris Van Holland in the Senate? So I have not seen those interactions personally. Obviously, this news broke overnight. But uh, if he did uh, represent to a congressional committee that he uh, had not heard from the special investigator about his distaste for the way in which he communicated information to Congress, then clearly he's not telling the truth. But I haven't seen those personally myself yet. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll we play them for you later uh, in this interview. <laughs> <Thanks>. Really, <laughs> Senator Murphy, it's Willie Geist, your Democratic Senate colleague, Chris Van Hollen, who was one of the interrogators in the clips we played earlier on April. 10th, which, who caught William Barr in a lie, uh, called last night for the attorney general to resign. Would you support that? Well, I, I, I never thought that William Barr should be there in the first right. place. Right. Uh, you voted so, against him. Right. So I voted against him. Uh, and, you know, I, again, I, I, I don't think that he can f fairly uh, sort of interact with Congress regarding uh, the next steps on the Mueller report, given that he has exposed himself as a political actor. So, you know, I didn't think he was worthwhile uh, as an attorney general to begin with. So uh, I, I, although I wonder who would come next, I don't think you're going to get uh, anybody better. Trump is very clearly trying to put people in the attorney general's uh, seat who are going to do his political bidding. Senator, we're going to play for you those clips, one from April the 9th, uh, where Charlie Crist asks a question of Attorney General Barr and then followed by Chris Van Hollen the day later. Let's listen. Reports have emerged recently, uh, General, that members of the special counsel's team are frustrated at some level with the limited information included in your March 24th letter. Uh, that it does not adequately or accurately necessarily portray the report's findings. Do you know what they're referencing with that? No, I don't. I think, I think, uh, I suspect that they probably wanted, you know, more put out. Did, did Bob Mueller support your conclusion? I don't know whether Bob Mueller supported my conclusion. So, Senator, that was on April 10th, where the Attorney General says, I don't know whether Bob Mueller supported my conclusion. We know now from the reporting in the Washington Post and the New York Times that on March 27th, Bob Mueller sent the letter to, wow. to Barr stating exactly the way he felt about the four-page summary. So was he lying there? It, it doesn't sound like he is telling the full truth. I, I, listen, I think there is some subtlety uh, about the answers to those questions. I think we need to know more about um, what Mueller told uh, the attorney general. And then we need to hear from Mueller himself. I, I mean, yeah. I think it's hard to get a full picture of this unless wait, wait, Congress but, 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 talks I, I'm, to I'm sorry, the Senator. I, I don't mean to interrupt you. But, but I mean, here, let's, wait, I'm going to play you the clip. Uh, only the, only, I'm going to only play you the Charlie Crist clip. And, you know, one of the problems with the Trump administration is they, they, they won't tell the difference between the truth and a lie. I need you to listen to Charlie Crist and tell us whether Barr is lying. Play the clip again. Reports have emerged recently, uh, General, that members of the special counsel's team are frustrated at some level with the limited information included in your March 24th letter. Uh, that it does not adequately or accurately necessarily portray the report's findings. Do you know what they're referencing with that? No, I don't. I think, I think, uh, I suspect that they probably wanted, you know, more put out. So, so Charlie Chris' question was, he, he said that, that they were frustrated that it does not adequately 
uh, portray the report's finding. That, that's almost Robert Mueller's words verbatim. Uh, in well, the letter. Uh, right. And he, say, and he says, I suspect that they wanted me to put more out when he clearly had a conversation with Robert Mueller in which Robert Mueller um, must have told him exactly why yo, he is, sent is, the letter. Is it a lie when, when he said he did not know whether they were frustrated? Uh, if, if he's claiming that he did not know that they were frustrated, then that is a lie. If he's claiming that he didn't know the basis for their frustration, um, then I think we need to know more about the conversation that he had. I, I, I get it that I'm that I'm parsing his words here, but I do think that certainly it's, it's important. I think it's important for him to talk about this today, and I think we will be in a much better position to determine whether he lied or not at the end of today's testimony. Uh, mm -hmm. Mike Barnacle. Senator, let's throw Robert's rules of order uh, out, the, out the window right now. Uh, Bill Barr will not resign. Bill Barr will not be impeached. What recourse does the United States Senate, specifically the minority Democrats, have about this? What can you do? Well, in the minority in the Senate, we have little recourse except to support the House in their work to hold this administration accountable. Uh, and um, uh, let's be clear, whatever you think about whether um, the information in the Mueller report are um, necessary or enough to move forward on impeachment, um, the obstruction of an investigation that follows up on this report uh, certainly could rise to the level of impeachment. Uh, and I think the administration has to understand that if they shut down any ability uh, for Congress to do our requisite um, follow-up uh, on this report, if they try to stop Bob Mueller from coming and testifying, that that in itself could trigger impeachment proceedings. Now, that is a choice of the House of Representatives, but the Senate, I think, right now has to support the House where the tools lie to try to get to the bottom of all of this. Incredible time. Senator, let's get to policy right now. You are rolling out a universal Medicare buy-in bill. Tell us about it. Yeah, so I think it's important to remember that despite all of the attention on Bob Barr's testimony today, um, the Trump administration is also going to court to file briefs uh, to um, eliminate the entirety of the Affordable Care Act through a court case that state attorney generals have filed. And frankly, um, this is what is worrying uh, millions of families all across the country today who rely on the Affordable Care Act for uh, coverage. Um, Senator Merkley and I are unveiling a proposal today that would allow every single American to buy into Medicare and every single business to buy into Medicare. Um, there are a lot of my colleagues who support Bernie Sanders' proposal to um, eliminate private insurance and to have everyone um, be required to go into Medicare. Our proposal is a little different. We give everyone and every single business, which makes our proposal unique, the ability to choose Medicare. Uh, we think that this may become the consensus proposal for Democrats heading into 2020. And I think uh, today it is important to remember uh, um, that there is a court case uh, proceeding to try to strip away protections for people with pre-existing condition, coverage for millions of Americans under Medicaid, uh, and we need to keep the focus on uh, health care as Democrats, even as the temperature rises on the Mueller investigation. All right. Senator Chris Murphy, thank you very much uh, for being on this morning. Thanks. Guys. And still ahead, a new snapshot of the Democrats' primary race for president. Bernie takes a tumble. Elizabeth Warren surges into second. But the big takeaway, Joe Biden way out in front, 26 points ahead of the pack. We'll run through the numbers just ahead on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.